Mark, thank you so much. There appears to be low, no limit in the demand for more products in California's thriving new industry for legalized medical and recreational marijuana. But cannabis experts are asking scientists to investigate some rising smoke from complaints by first time and even long time users. The most like negative drug experiences I've ever had in my life are from weed edibles. Really? Yeah. You mean more so than like acid or coke? As 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 having like one one like one bite too much of weed brown. So what do you have like a half or yeah, something? Yeah, like or... that's the thing is like it's always a crapshoot. A new report reveals the chocolate butter and oil used in pot brownies and other edibles could be giving users a bigger and more dangerous high than expected. Joining us with details is clinical nurse specialist and ER nurse Alice Benjamin. Good morning. Good, good morning. to see you. Good morning. Um, so the first smoke signals of this problem came from people that were showing up in emergency rooms. And I think just like Seth was saying there, people don't know, right? When they see an edible or a piece of candy, what the effect will be or how much is in it. Exactly. And so by the time someone's presented into the emergency room, they've already had an overdose of THC. And what happens is THC is responsible for the psychological effects. Um, and so what happens is it activates our body to, um, it influences your motion, your coordination, judgment, your sensation, and it overwhelms the body. And so by the time someone's coming to the emergency mm -hmm. room, they're feeling hot, dizzy, they may be hallucinating, they're very paranoid, nausea and vomiting. And so we quickly get into action because we're unsure of what the impact really is. So we watch their blood pressure, their heart rate. We might even um, apply oxygen, cardiac monitoring, and we're giving antipsychotic medications, yeah. um, anti-anxiety medications, IV fluids, and the whole regimen just to make sure that they're safe. So doctors are studying this, and as you're finding out, is chocolate the problem? Yes, yeah, so there are some new studies that are showing that a, a edible brownie that might say 10 milligrams of THC actually may have more. And what scientists are discovering is, as we mentioned, the butters and the fats, mm -hmm. and they're specifically looked at chocolate. This binds to the THC, so in the potency testing, the THC is hidden. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when it comes out with a measurement, it's actually lower than what's really in the product. Okay. This happened to a friend of mine. Look at these chocolate bars, because they look just like regular chocolate. Yeah. And yes. he... He was at a friend's house and basically ate the whole bar, Ooh. thinking it was chocolate. Thinking it was regular. And then had the whole thing. And then got hungry. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Yes. Yikes. And I think there's something also people need to be aware of. Smoking marijuana versus ingesting it are mm -hmm. two totally different things. When you ingest it, you um, it takes a lot longer for the uh, effects to take So people on. probably say, oh, I don't feel anything, right? Absolutely. About they... 10, 15 minutes, oh, I don't feel anything. Then they go for the, uh, a second brownie. And actually, it's just taking a little longer for the body to process it. But when those effects hit, they're going to last a lot longer and be a lot more intense. What is the designated dosing for edibles and how is it regulated? So there's a standard or federal dosing of 10 milligrams. However, I want to caution people because of what we mentioned, um, there are actually inconsistencies with potency testing. Mm -hmm. So we're not really sure if it says 10 milligrams that there actually are 10 milligrams. Okay. And you need to take in consideration how everyone uh, metabolizes this in their body. So this is what makes it very difficult for healthcare providers to prescribe medical marijuana. So if someone were going to use medical marijuana, you know, 10 milligrams is kind of a standard dose, but I would encourage you, because I do believe there's a, a place for medical marijuana use in appropriate situations, that you start low and go slow to find out what works for you. And it is medicine. So you're not going to go into a friend's medicine cabinet and grab some of their Claritin or their cholesterol medication. If you're doing edibles, probably the best recommendation, make sure you know what you're putting in your body, right? Absolutely. And as Sam was saying, sometimes you don't know that that, it's, 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 that it was that. <laughs> they thought it was just regular, like Hershey's chocolate. Yes. And everyone loves chocolate, right? right. Yeah. But you got to be very careful with what you're ingesting. Right. Um, okay. So what are the early warning signs that people should know if they are feeling things that, that scare them they shouldn't be feeling? Right. So while here in California, medical marijuana use and recreational use are legal. So when you're using it, um, it should provide some symptom relief, pain management, help you with anxiety, de-stress a little bit. But the minute you start to feel hot or dizzy, have some problems with perception or coordination, that's a sign too much stop right there. Mm -hmm. That's enough because if we overexcite our receptors, like I said, you can go into hallucinations, um, have extreme anxiety, and actually experience things like chest pains, which is what people are coming to the emergency room How with. long does it stay in your system? Well, interesting. So actually with the urine or blood test, depending on which you use, it can actually be detected into your system for up to 13 days. Wow. wow. Yes. 
So even though the symptoms have long gone, it's still detectable um, chemically in your body. There's uh, some places that sell these things, and I don't know if it works or not, but uh, you, if you start getting overdosed or whatever, you can drink something and it brings you down. Is that... Uh is well, a... well, I'm not sure about those exact chemicals, but we, in the emergency room, we do give IV fluids, and the goal is to kind of, if you'll say, flush it out of your body, because mm -hmm. it does need to be metabolized out through your urine and through your waste, so we need to expedite that process, however it may be. So, I don't know if sure those chemicals, but we definitely give yeah. IV fluids to kind of uh, get that out of your system, because there is no antidote. Mm -hmm. there Thanks, Nurse Alice. Alice Thank Benjamin, you. Benjamin, an emergency room RN, clinical nurse specialist. You can follow her on social media and check out her website, ask. NurseAlice.com. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.